today uh, we are going to discuss the bond valuation of coupon bond this is our lecture of financial management moving on the contents that we would discuss in this chapter in this lecture are bond rating and the valuation of zero coupon bond remember in last lecture we discussed that uh, there is a mechanism of bond rating and there are two agencies the standard and poor and moody's that um, are famous for their bond valuation of corporate bonds and in this lecture we are going to discuss in detail about those so let's move to the next slide okay so this is just to give an idea to you uh, we, we said that there is moody's and then there is standard and poor and what they do is they rate they are called uh, credit rating agencies they rate the uh, bonds or corporations on the basis of their credit worthiness so the highest rating is triple a and the lowest rating would be d in case of standard and poor and c in case of moody's so the highest rating would mean that the the, the the chances of default of the corporation on their interest payment or principal amount payment are low so if a company or a bond is in the d category then we can say or in c category then we can say that their chances of default is high they are more likely it is more likely that they would not be able to pay their interest payment or the principal amount so in short the the bonds that are in this spectrum in the higher spectrum of this um, rating they have lesser credit risk or default risk and those that have the lower rating would have higher default risk or chances of default so because their risk is less their return would be also less so uh, so those bonds that are in triple a rating they would pay less to their uh, bond holders as compared to those bonds that are in lower categories moving on we have somehow discussed this aspect but let's give it another top thought uh, we have short term bonds and then we have long term bonds short term bonds are those that have uh, maturity of a year or less than it and long term bonds are for maturity of more than a year moving on what is intrinsic value this is the main concept and uh, to understand the valuation of a bond to give you idea of what intrinsic value is imagine that you are going to buy a car so to buy that car how would you find out the true value of that car we can call this true value or this intrinsic value or fair value they are all same thing so how would you find the true value of that uh, that car what you would do is you would uh, check the specification of that car what is the condition of the engine how is the overall body of that car uh, which model is that car um, uh, what about the company uh, of that car so based on that fundamental aspects of a car you would say you would analyze you would evaluate that that car is worth rupees 1 lakh rupees its true value is 1 lakh rupees and you must buy that car at 1 lakh rupees right and not higher from that price so what you have done is you have performed a process of valuing that car and this process is called valuation so what you did is you analyzed the 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 fundamental of a car the car 
and you came up with its value. This is called valuation of that car. And if you did this process for a bond, then that would be called the valuation of a bond or in short bond valuation. So let's take this example uh, one step further. Let's say the owner of that car demanded 1,20,000 rupees. What would this value be called first of all? It would be called the market value. The value of that asset in the market or the value of that asset that is being sold in the market. That is the market value. In this case, the market value is greater than the intrinsic value. Remember intrinsic value is 1 lakh rupees. You have analyzed that that car is worth 1 lakh rupees and the market value is 1 lakh 20,000 rupees. So in this case, the market value is greater than the intrinsic value. So what would you say? That is, it is overvalued in the market. This specific car is overvalued in the market. So if you had to made, make a decision, you would probably not buy this car because it is overvalued. What if the owner asks you for 80,000 rupees? In that case, we know that market value is less than intrinsic value. And when that happens, we call it undervalued. That specific asset is undervalued in the market. It is being sold at less than its intrinsic price. It is being sold at the price lower than what it should have been sold at. So, this similar is the case for bonds. If the market value is higher than the intrinsic value, then it is overvalued. And if market value is lower than intrinsic value, then it is undervalued. This valuation concept of market and in intrinsic value would be more clear when we study stock valuation. But, but let's have an idea. right? So, so we have got an idea that what intrinsic value is, what market value is, and when a bond or a stock would be overvalued or undervalued. So moving back to our slides, we have covered these aspects. Let's move forward. So remember when we say valuation of a bond, we need to understand this that valuation of bond, this aspect depend on what type of a bond it is, whether it is a zero coupon bond or it is a coupon bond. The valuation would depend. If it is a zero coupon bond, then we would use a different methodology to calculate its intrinsic value. Or I, uh, we remember that value by valuation, we mean we have to find the intrinsic value. And if it is a coupon bond, then we would use a different methodology to find the intrinsic value of that bond. So let's move back to our slides. This is the first type of the bond, valuation of zero coupon bond. And what is zero coupon bond? We have discussed it in previous lecture. It is also called discount bond. It is the bond, remember zero, so there is no coupon, there is no interest payment. So why would someone buy that bond? They buy it at a lower price and then they sell it at higher price. So they, the companies, let's say a bond that is of rupees 1000, the company would sell it at 800 rupees. So when it would be redeemed, it would be given back to the company on its maturity the company would repay 1000 rupees. So this 200 gap of uh, between the buying and selling price would be their profit. So there is no coupon. It sells below its face value. That's why it's called discount. And it is re redeemable at face value. That is, let's say you bought a bond at 800 rupees. Its face value is 1000. That bond would expire in three years. So after three years, when you would give that certificate, that bond back to the company, the company would, instead of giving you 800 rupees, they would have to give you the face value, 1000 rupees. So it is redeemable at which price? At the face value. 
now here comes the idea that how do we find the true value of a zero coupon bond remember in the car example we did some fundamental analysis in here we would like to do another type of fundamental analysis and that analysis is based on the cash flows of the bond so what this formula is familiar to you this is the formula of present value remember when we used to find the present value in time value of money or in other concepts in other chapters the formula was present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus r raised to power n this is exactly the same formula we have just changed the terminologies because the concept is because these terminologies are related to bonds so here we are finding the value of zero coupon bond so bond value is equal to face value divided by 1 plus ytm ytm stands for yield to maturity in in next slide we will discuss what yield to maturity means raised to power n or t they are both uh, the same thing so let's do an example and then it would be more clear so if an investor wishes to make 6% return on the bond with 25,000 par value, remember par value, face value, they are both same things. What uh, that is due to mature in 3 years, how much he will be willing to pay. So what we need to find, basically we need to find the present value. right? Uh, in this case, we need to find what is the current value of the bond, what is the true value, what is the intrinsic value of the bond. So, how do you find it? Using the formula we discussed in this slide. So, let me bring the solved example. So, we are discussing valuation of zero coupon bond. This is our first example and the formula is bond value is equal to the face value divided by 1 plus YTM. YTM stands for yield to maturity. This face value is also called par value. Raised to power n or t, they both are similar. So in our previous example, let me get back to the example. The face value was 25,000. And the uh, YTM was 6%. The time period was 3 years. Going back, face value. 25,000 divided by 1 plus YTM. Remember it was 6%. So we convert it into decimal by dividing 6. Uh, 6 divided by 100. Remember when we convert a percentage into decimal point. We divide that number with 100. So 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to power 3 years. So our value is 2990. This is what we call the intrinsic value, the true value, the fair value. This is the same as uh, the 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 same phenomena that we discussed in the example of car. You uh, you know the one lakh rupees that you found. Imagine this is that one lakh rupees, right? So this twenty. What what do we mean by this twenty thousand nine hundred ninety rupees? If you are going to buy this bond whose face value is 25,000 and the yield to maturity is 6% or you wish to make 6% on that bond, then today you should buy that bond at 20,990. You shouldn't buy it at higher price. You can get it at lower price, but you wouldn't get it at lower price because we say markets are efficient. So. If you are a, a corporation and you are selling this bond, at what price should you sell this bond? You should sell it at 20,990, not less than this. So this technique is used both for the investor and the corporation, the bond holder or the, the bond seller. And they both need to find intrinsic value to sell it. So we have found this intrinsic value and uh, Let's get back to the slides. Okay, so here, uh, remember we said we would discuss yield to maturity. Yield to maturity, what do we mean by yield? Yield simply means return. Uh, so, 
YTM means that if we buy a bond and hold it till maturity, what would be our total return on that bond? Say for example, if today I bought a bond at 800 rupees and hold it for 3 years, then I give it back to the company for face value and the face value is 1000 rupees then how much did I earn in this time period? What was my yearly return in this time period? This is the yield to maturity. So it is also known as the bond's internal rate of return. If you, rem if you are familiar with the concept of IRR, we discussed in capital budgeting techniques. So this is the bond's internal rate of return. Uh, so YTM of is, how do you find the YTM of zero coupon bond? The formula is YTM is equal to, remember we are just, you know, changing that formula into this arithmetically. Uh, it is not a new formula and if you have, if you are familiar with the concepts of time value of money, this is the formula that we use to find the value of R. In a question, if the other values were given and we, ne we needed to find the value of R, then we would use this formula, remember. So YTM is equal to face value divided by Current bond price raised to power 1 by n minus 1. Let's discuss an example. Suppose the following zero coupon bonds are trading at a price shown below. So there are four different bonds. This bond have a maturity of one year. This bond have a maturity of two, three and four. So these are four different bonds. Today this bond is... Be, is uh, is being sold at 96.62 rupees and it would mature in one year that is if we buy this bond today at 96.62 rupees after one year we would give this bond back to the company and company would give us 100 rupees or dollars so our profit would be the difference between the buying and the selling price this bond so this 92.45 it means that if we buy this bond today, we would buy it at 92.45 rupees. We would hold it at two years because it would mature in two years. After two years, we would redeem this bond. We would give this bond back to the company and the company would give us $100 or rupees. So our profit would be the difference between this price and so on and so forth. So if you are asked, which bond would you buy? So, you know, a, a layman would say that this bond have a lower sell buying price. So we can buy it at lowest price, remember. And then we would sell it at 100 rupees. So our profit would be a highest in this four year bond. But that is a wrong way of estimating this um, or analyzing this concept. The correct way would be to find the yield to maturity, the return of that bond. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the yield to maturity and based on yield to maturity, we need to find which one is the best option. And how would we select which one is the best option? The one with the highest yield to maturity or the lowest yield to maturity? And remember yield to maturity is nothing but the return. So which project would you select or which bond would you select or which investment option would you select? The one with the highest return. So we select the bond with highest yield to maturity. So let's get back to the solution of this example. Our formula is YTM is equal to future value divided by present value raised to power 1 divided by n minus 1. This is for the bond of one year. The one year bond had a face value of 100 face value. Its current present value was 96.62 and that bond was for one year so 1 divided by n is 1 minus 1 it gives us 0 0.079 or multiply by 100 to convert it into percentages. So this would give us 7.9%. So we can say that this bond would earn 7.9% return. This two year bond, 
face value is 100 the present value is 92.45 n is 2 because this bond matures in 2 years we calculate that its return is 0 0.04 or 4 percent you need to do it for 3 years and 4 years I just mentioned the answers so looking at these percentages what do you think which bond is more profitable which bond would you buy which bond would you uh, would have higher return obviously this bond that matures in year one it would not always be the case but in this example this is the case so which bond we should select we should select this one remember uh, the basic uh, idea was k you, you would select this the four year bond because it was selling at lower price and it would give but uh, uh, you were buying it at lower price and you were selling it to the company at higher price but when we look at the yield to maturity it do not have a higher yield to maturity so the correct way to analyze this problem would be using yield to maturity so in next lecture we would uh, uh, we would understand that how do we find the value of a coupon bond so currently we have discussed the zero coupon bond and in the next lecture we would understand the coupon bond thank you very much